hallelujah hallelujah let's give god the highest praise will you stand to your feet come on in and give god the highest praise because he is worthy to be praised today is december the 18th 2022 and we have made it this far so we should all say hallelujah and thank God for waking us up this morning because it could have been us. The song says, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. It could have been us outdoors with no house, no shoes, no food, no clothes on our body. But thank you, Lord, that he has brought us into the, whole, the household today, clothing our right mind, all the facilities of our limbs, so God, we just give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. You're tuning in to Restoration Free Gospel Church of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give God some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Restoration Free Gospel Church of Christ. Down here where Bishop Green, Bishop Briscoe is the pa pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and his lovely wife, First Lady Briscoe, to Elder Russell, and his beautiful wife, Lat Minister Latasha Slade, to all of the officials, the whole household of faith. We just thank you for restoration, tuning in to Restoration Free Gospel Church. We thank you for those who are watching online. We just thank you, Lord, for bringing us into the building on today. So if you can get your hearts clear, we're going to go in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for waking us up this morning, God. We thank you for just bringing us here in our right mind, God. We ask for forgiveness, God. If there's anything that we've done wrong in thought, word, or deed, God, we are asking for forgiveness, God, because we want to come to you with a pure heart this morning to offer you our pure worship, God. And we thank you, Lord, for those that are traveling, God. We ask that you give them traveling mercies, God. Let them get to their destination safely and return safely, God. God, we ask that you be with everyone doing this week God as they go about their way continue to watch over them and protect them going in and coming out God and also God allow them to be watchful as well as pray in this season God God and we thank you for those that are watching online God we ask God that you will bless them that someone will say what must I do to be saved and reach out Lord so they can know the plan of salvation God and God, we just thank you for each and every one that is here in the building. God, we ask that you supply each and every need according to your will. And we ask that you bless the speaker on this morning, God, that he will send forth a word, God, that we can just eat on it, God. And we thank you, Lord, for JWM, God. Let them sing praises unto the Lord, God. And we ask, God, that you bring unity in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be reading today from Psalm chapter 145, verses 1 through 4, from the NLT version. And it reads, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. And the word is blessed. And right now we're going to bring forth JWM in Jesus name. Amen.
Yes, God is real. 
you know God is real? Oh, come on, lift up the King of Kings. He is real. Hallelujah, all over this place. Come on, if you come here with pain in your body, if the Lord is real to you, oh, come on, lift up the King of Kings. Lift up his holy name before holy king. Hallelujah, he is real. Just like pure gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. second all over the place because we serve a righteous God that always is looking before us, standing with us, fighting for us and we owe him our hallelujah we got to find a place to give it to him what's the best time right now after all God is dead and that he's doing
in the presence of your worship. Don't take your worship experience lightly. God is with you. He's interpreted. Emmanuel. For well, God is with us. And if you know the song, worship with us. Don't sit back on your praise. Not today. Not tomorrow. Listen, we sing this song. Worship him. Worship and adore him. I don't think y'all heard us. Somebody say, come. Come. Yeah. 
worship you. Emmanuel. We give you praise. We give you praise. Emmanuel. Come on, somebody say we. We worship you.
Come on, I dare you raise your hand right where you at. We worship you. How bad do you want them? Come on, let him in. We worship you. Last time. We worship you. Keep it going, Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus God, with us. Amen. Come on, praise him. Pick me up. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel. Yes, God. Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. King, Lord of Lords. Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus. We lift you up. Emmanuel. Come on. Come on. Let's Emmanuel. praise the Lord. Emmanuel. Come on, listen. Help me say it. Emmanuel. Come on. King Can we praise him this morning? Lord of Lords. Emmanuel. We bless you, Lord. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, we're coming into a holiday Emmanuel. season to worship his birthday. Amen. Come on, let's Emmanuel. praise him. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes, God. Bless you, Lord. Lift you high. Emmanuel. You might not we can praise him Lord. nowhere, but we you can praise him here. Emmanuel. Come on, let's give him some glory. Give him praise. Lord of Lord. Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord of Lords. Emmanuel. Thank you, God. You Call him by name. Emmanuel. Yeah. Interpret as God with us. Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. We, he we worship you. Us. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. We lift we you up. You. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. We worship, we worship you. Hallelujah. We worship Thank you, you. Jesus. We, we worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. Father, in the awesome mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and the shedding of his blood. We thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost, God. We thank you for the repentance in the world of baptism, God. We thank you for being our ever-present God in our life, God. We thank you for taking us through another year, God. God, we thank you for your word that you left on record for us to live by, God. God, we thank you for going to the cross, dying, conquering death, hell, and the grave, and rising one day with all power in heaven and in earth. God, we thank you, God. Emmanuel, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give the praise team a hand for leading us into the midst of praise this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I thank God for them. Amen. I remember when King Jehoshaphat back there in, in the book of Chronicles when he was going into battle and God told him, don't take the army. Just take the praise team. Come on, y'all. Now, now, if I'm going into a crisis situation, come on. Now, I, I, I need you to just pay attention to me one minute here. Just, just stop what you're doing and pay attention to me one minute here. If I'm going into a battle and God done told me don't take the strong men, don't take the battle-weary men, but just take the praise team. Now look at the praise team. Praise team, can I take you with me? Is your praises high enough to put the devil to flight? Hallelujah. The praises were so high, God said he took the enemies and turned them against each other. Hallelujah. Can I take you, praise leaders? Can you lead me into the battle that I got to go through? I might be going through whatever, a sickness, a divorce, 
uh, a job coming in. I don't know what I got to go through, but praise him. Can I depend on you Woo! to take me through? Hallelujah. God told Johannes that you don't need the army. Victory. In fact, he said the victory was already yours. Just take the praise leaders down and let them sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Get to heaven. You to, We're going to praise God 24-7. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God. He said the four and 20 elders took their crowns off. Amen. Laid them aside because it's not about positions up there. It's about praising the Lord when you get up there. Amen. It's not about being the bishop or the apostle or the deacon or the leader down here. When you get up there, you're going to praise God. Amen. Ain't but one King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And all praise and all glory goes unto him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I thank God again for you this morning. Amen. I thank God for the elder. Amen. And his, and his bride. Amen. We praise God for an awesome man of God. Amen. We thank God for the musicians this morning. We thank God for the praise leaders. We thank God truly for the first lady. Amen. We thank God for the deacons, the ministers, and their wives, and all the household of faith. We give God glory this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Our, our theme for this month is what, what he says, Peter, feed my sheep. Man, I'm concentrating on Peter this month. Amen. Because I've been so hard on Peter. Because, you know, we all talk about Peter when he, when he betrayed the Lord. Amen. We talk about when he cut the soldiers' ear off. We talk about him, how he always has something to say. <sighs> but I want to show you one thing about Peter. Even after he denied the Lord... Even after he cut the soldiers' ear off, even after he always spoke of the term, you don't realize that God was molding him for leadership. A lot of times we go through things and we don't realize. I, I told my daughters the other day, we were talking, and I said, you just don't realize when God is molding you for ministry. You know, and, and, and now I, I need a minister. Uh, Elizabeth is not here this morning. But I need you Bible scholars that I can, I can look over at, you know. And I remember when God told the husband man to cut this tree down because he wasn't bringing forth fruit. And I thank God for the husband man. He told God, give him another year. Let me dig around it and dung it. And sometimes you think about the digging and the dunging that you go through. It's bad. It's not good for you. But if you think about dung, some of the greatest vegetables, mm, some of the biggest trees, sweetest watermelons, awesome tomatoes, greatest greens, has come through the, Brother Ron going to help me, uh, the right amount of dung. Because, see, you can put too much dung, but there's a right among the dung that will make that watermelon the sweetest and the juices. You go through there and you pluck on it. You pluck on it to get the right one. And you just don't realize how much dung has been put around that particular watermelon to get it to the point where, you, where it needs to be sweet unto you. Now, it needed rain because God says, a little rain will fall on every the just and the unjust. Amen. It needs the sunlight because God's going to shine on everybody. Amen. The ones that you lack, you don't lack or whatever. Everybody's got to have some rain. Everybody's got to have some sunlight. And God knows if God's going to grow you, he's going to put some dung in your life to get you to where he wants you to be. And I think about Peter. Amen. And I, my little side thought here says that he was faithful to the end. Amen. He was faithful to his calling, feed my sheep. Amen. He got past, but he had to get past himself. And this is, as we grow in God, we got to get past self. Because when I look at the thing that holds me back the most, it's not other people. It's myself and how I look on people and how I feel about this one. And, how, and we're in a time, if you notice this time of year, and all of you notice. Know before COVID came and everybody was in the malls and the shopping center. You know y'all loved on everybody. 
Oh, you spoke to everybody as you went through the stores and what have you. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. People you didn't even know you were laying love on them. What happens after Christmas? What? Oh, Lord have mercy. I turned my mic down, y'all. Lord have mercy. What happens after Christmas? And then, you know, you don't stay there for long, but you, you know, you, 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 you put out a plenty of dung, but you're growing somebody. And then Valentine come. Here come February. Lord have mercy. Oh, we back to loving again. Oh, we just going to lay love on. Oh, my God. Everybody wants to, everybody wants to know what you're giving me for Valentine. If if God were to give you what you earn, mm. come on, Bishop. See, 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 y'all said that about Santa Claus. Santa Claus always said, you always said, have you been naughty or nice? Now I don't know. There, you know, I don't mess little children that might be listening to this, but I'm gonna leave Santa Claus alone. But I know I got a God that said hi and look low. And you know, he's got books. He's got a book. The, one of the A book has got, the, got your Lamb Book of Life in it. He's got your name written in the A book. But there's another one that talks about the books. Now, the A book comes when you get saved and he writes your name in the A book. We're going to get to the A book later. But there's another book over here, and it don't say book, it says books. And in the books is everything that you've done, done through life. Now, 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 let me help you out. Because there's a whole lot of stuff written in. That's why they said the books. Because in the books, we do a whole lot of things. But there is one thing about the books. And let me help you out because I never want to keep you under condemnation. There's an eraser that he gave us. That when, he, when, we, when, we, when we didn't love somebody and, and, the, and the goodness and mercy that's walking behind us took a note. And when we said something about somebody that wasn't nice, goodness and mercy wrote it in the books. And when we didn't treat somebody like we should, goodness and mercy wrote it in the book, in the books. But there is a thing that will clear up the books. He said, if you repent, the repentance is like the eraser. He said, if I repent of how I said something to somebody, he said, I'll erase it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, if I, if I repent on how, what I said to somebody, he said, I'll erase it. And then that th here's the secret thing there, minister. He said, if I repent for the, even the idle thought, because see, goodness and mercy is even writing down the idle thoughts. You didn't say it out of your mouth. When, when David danced out of his clothes, it didn't say his wife Hollered at the one Adam and saw you a disgusting man. The scripture says she thought it in her heart. And God shut her wound down. Say you'll never have a child the way you thought about your husband. Don't holler too. Woo! That's the kind of God we have. See, but he left us. He didn't leave us undone. He left us with repentance. And he said, if you repent of it, that's your eraser. And all that stuff won't stay in the books. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to talk about Peter this morning, and we're going to deal with some things. This, the text is things that pertain unto first life. Because, see, until you get life, until you get born again, you don't even have life. You don't even have life. Now, now, why would I say that? Because the scripture says, if you don't accept Jesus Christ, when you die, the scripture says you're twice dead. Twice dead. And plucked up by the roots. See, and you, life don't come until you accept Jesus Christ in your life and is born again. Walk now you life. are alive. Amen. And live forevermore. But if you don't ever come and accept Jesus Christ and get saved and born again, you're, never, you're not alive. Amen. Walk Amen. So the first thing we're going to deal with this morning, he said, things that pertain unto who? Things that pertain unto Lord have mercy. Are y'all with me this morning? I, I, don't, I lost them, Brother Brown. They, they, they were more with you than they were with me. You might now come on up here. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. We're going to deal with some things that pertain unto. <sighs> For you out there. You come on, be with me. We're gonna pertain. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some things that pertain unto life and godliness this morning. Amen. Come on, preach. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Acts two thirty seven because we want to show that Peter was faithful when God told him to feed my sheep. We're just gonna touch on three little books first, three little things first, and then we're gonna go to the message. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna deal with the things first of all pertaining to what life. Before we get to the things of godliness. Amen. First of all, you got to know that you are part of life. Amen. Acts 2.37 and it reads. Now when they heard this. Now when the people heard this from Peter. Read. They were pricked in their hearts. They were pricked in their hearts. And said unto Peter. Said unto Peter. And to the rest of they the They said it unto Peter and to the rest of them. Because see, you got to understand. When Jesus was being crucified, the last person that he talked to not before he got on the cross was Peter. And he didn't even talk to Peter. He just looked at Peter. And Peter said, I don't know the man. Started cussing and things. And he just looked at him and went on to the cross. Amen. It's a funny thing. I, I grew up in a, in, a, in a time when your parents didn't have to beat on you all the time. They just had to just... And you knew you were going to get whipped. You, you knew, you knew, you knew. You knew when you got that look. You knew, it, and, and if you didn't get it, you was tormented until the time came that, that you didn't get it. But when, you know, they, they were the type that would go back and get things. I know I didn't get you last week for what you said, but I'm adding it to the day. And Jesus just looked at Peter. And went on to the cross. Because <sighs> Peter, I done told you the night before, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. That for three and a half years, you're going to tell the people that you never, you don't know me. You never ate my food. You never laid on my press. And Peter's starting to cuss and what have you. But that's all right. We're we not going to deal with that today. Amen. Me. And, and now... That the last person he just looked at. All right, read. He said, Now, men and brethren, and they asked Peter, What shall we do? Read. What, what shall we do? Uh huh. Hold on. Let me, let me get that well. Go ahead, 37. Bring it on back in. 37, 38. Now, when they heard this, uh huh. They were pricked in their heart. They were pricked in their hearts. And said unto Peter. And said unto Peter. And to the rest of the apostles. And the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. What shall we do? What shall we do? And Peter, bold now. Because Peter, you know Peter will talk. Thank you. What Peter tell him? Then Peter said unto them. And Peter said unto them. Repent. Repent. And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the Christ, name of Jesus Christ. For. For. The remission of sins. For the removing of your sins. And Amen. And ye Thank shall. And ye shall. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's go to Acts 10. We're going to stay in Acts for three scriptures, so don't get out of Acts. Acts 10, chapter 10, amen, verses 44 through 48, amen. See, Peter's talking, first of all, to the Jew, and he's telling the Jew how to get saved, amen. Now he's going to go over here and talk to the Gentile. We want to see whether his story changed or not, because, you know, sometimes your story changed depending on who you're talking to. Mm, I don't. I don't know if you like that. You know that. You you know that. The only thing about a lie, you gotta you gotta be good at it because when when you go to tell a lie, you know you 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 know that's why it's easy to tell the truth because the truth you ain't gotta think about it. The truth is truth. Amen. And the Bible says truth is every word that proceeded by the mouth of God. You know you ain't gotta think about it. But when you think about that lie, you gotta think about how did I tell this the last time? Let's see now. Wait a minute. I gotta get this right. I got to get this right. And they'll be saying, why are you taking so long? Go, no, I got to get it right now. I got to get it right. Got to get it right. Got to get it right. So now he done left, the, the, he done left Israelites in Acts 2, 37, 38. And we're going over to Acts 10. Amen. And let's see what he's going to say to the Gentiles. Come on, let's see. While Peter yet spake these words. He's now at Cornelius' house where the Gentiles, the dogs, don't call him for an evangelist to come in and preach to him. Amen. God just told him, go, go, send to Joppa and get one called P 
Peter. He, he tell him where he is. He's on the man's roof, sleep, and whatever. And God done told him where. Send the job and get him, and he'll tell you what you ought to do. Amen. Then this is to the Gentiles, the dogs. Amen. We want to see whether his message is different than what the Jews have. Amen. amen. What did he say? What he says here? While 44 Peter says, while spake, Peter yet spake. These words. Uh-huh. The Holy Ghost Woo. fell on all of them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. Uh-huh. Read. And, and they of the circumcision mm -hmm. which believe were astonished. The, the Jews that heard this were astonished. Come on, read. As many as came with Peter. As many as came with Peter. Because that on the Gentiles. That on the Gentiles. Also was poured out. Was also poured out. The Holy Ghost. <clears throat> the gift. Of the Holy Ghost. Uh huh. Read. Well, they heard them speak with tongues. See, see, when the Holy Ghost come, you gonna hear them speak with tongues. With tongues. Mm. Some people say, "I got the Holy Ghost, but I never spoke." You better check your Holy Ghost. Uh huh. Uh huh. See, see, they tell you, you don't buy shoes with no tongues. Amen. See, 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 see. So you got to know this. I just want to see. This is a foundation. I just want to deal with the foundation for a little while. Just to see whether Peter is going to tell the Gentile the same thing that he told the Jew. Amen. Because Amen. God only got one salvation. Amen. He don't have a salvation for you, brother. And then one for me. And Come then on. one for you. Jesus Christ didn't die three times tell on the truth. cross. One for you, one for me, and one for you. He died one time. For all of us. Hallelujah. Come on now. Let's see. Let's see what it says here now. He said, now, by Peter, yet spake these words. The Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, or the Jews, which believed, which came with Peter, which believed, was astonished. As many which came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. 46, read. For they heard them speak with tongues. For they heard them speak with tongues. And magnify and God. And magnify God. Then answered Peter. Then answered Peter. Come on, brother Peter. What you got to say about this? Can any man forbid water? He's not talking about the, the, the dogs and the Gentiles. He's talking about the ones that come with him now. He said, can any man do what? Forbid water. Forbid water. water. That these should not be baptized. That these should not be baptized. Which have received the Holy Ghost. Which have received the as, Holy Ghost. As well as we. As well as we read. And he commanded. Oh, I lack 48. I lack 48. 48, read it again. And he commanded and them. And Peter commanded them. And he commanded them to be baptized. To be baptized. In the name in of the, the name Lord. In the name of the Lord. Read. Then pray uh -huh. they him uh -huh. to tarry certain days. Look at there. He preached so good they want him to stay down now for a few days. When somebody invites you to their church and asks you to stay longer than the revival was called for. You know, I've been in some services like that. Man came to stay for two days and he stayed there a month. Mm. Hey, right, baby? Stayed a whole month. Came for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and wound up staying the whole month. Thank you, Lord. Now, now, you know they're receiving the word then. They, they, they happened to hear what's being said. Stayed the whole month. We went to D.C. almost every night. Praise God. Lord have mercy. Hey, we're going to chat. We're going to stay in the book of Acts. We're going to flip back to chapter 8. Amen. 8, 14, 17. 8, 14, 17. Because when, they, when the widow women was being neglected, they raised up some deacons in the church. Amen. And this young man named Philip is one of the deacons. Amen. Now, now, I, now one thing about it, we done seen the Gentiles saved. We done seen Israel get saved. Now, I just want to let you know, Peter's not a man that won't come down uh -huh. to just wherever he's called to go. Amen. Like, see, because I want to show you that Peter was faithful to his calling to feed God's sheep wherever. Amen. After he got past himself. See, God had to bring him. I tell you all the time, before God use you, he's going to break you. If you're looking for a high calling in the Lord, God's going to take you out somewhere and whip you. He's going to put some dung around you. And what, he's going to smother you. You're going to come out smelling just like dung. But you're going to be an awesome person after that. Because God got to get you past you. Amen. Uh -huh. See, he did the same thing. I'm not telling a lie. Think about Jacob. Jacob was an awful man of God. But God had to get him out there by himself. And God will get you by yourself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And he, he whipped Jacob that night. Uh, and it said that Jacob from that time on walked with a limp. Because he told God, you got to turn me loose. And Jacob said, I'm not turning you loose. And the scripture said that God hit him in the hollow of his hip. 
And from that day on, see, you might wind up with a limp. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But you'll remember the night you spent with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You will never forget that day. You, Paul never forgot that day oh. when Jesus Christ, he's on his way to Damascus to kill up the church, set up the church, and that lightning bolt hit him, knocked him off his beast. And while he was down there, he said, Lord, who art thou? And what would thou have me to do? Come he on. said, get up. Surrender. Get up and go into the city. And from the cross, Ananias, he'll tell you what you must do. You ain't got no option in this, Brother Saul. Hallelujah. You ain't got no I'm calling you to replace Stevenson, the one that you just helped stone to death. So you got to be careful when you stone somebody to death. Come God, I'll put you right in their place. Uh -huh. So said, why they stoned that deacon Philip, a faithful man. They stoned him to death. For the word of God. He held their coats while everybody picked up the rocks and stoned him. And God said, all right, you're going to replace him. I'm going to use you to replace him. Come on, mm -hmm. man. Preach, See, man. the very one you're talking about, God might you. Preach. Preach. Life ain't over with yet. Mm -hmm. Life ain't over with. Keep on talking about them. Keep, Keep on, on running them down. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Dung's coming your way. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's see what. Let's, this is part of the foundation. Amen. Uh -huh. We got to get past the foundation because we got to get past the other stuff, get to the other stuff. Now, where are we at? We're going to Acts. Acts? Yes. Chapter, eight, chapter, chapter eight, 8, verse 5. Verse 5. And then 14 and 17 in chapter 8. All right, where we at? Read. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. Now, you know the Jew didn't like Samaria. They're, they're, they're in a racial marriage to begin with. The Jews and the Gentiles that got married, and they called them dogs. Then there was something they didn't like about those people. The Israelites didn't. And God sent him right down there. God will send you right to people that you don't like. Come on, man. He'll send you right to somebody that you got to order against. And you tried to go every other way. Now, it's like that little, that, that, uh, uh, little movie that you look at, uh, The Praying Woman. Uh, the War Room. The War Room. And you know there was one of the managers... <coughs> Excuse me, they didn't like the guy. Always looked at him and said things that wasn't right. And God let him have a flat tire. <sighs> mm. Triple A couldn't get to him. Uh -huh. God one day will let you have a flat tire. <sighs> and the very people that you depended on all the time Lord can't have get mercy. to you. And here come the one that you got an order against. Thank God everyone don't love like you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we're in that time of season that we love on everybody. We just love on everybody. But what happens after this day? What happens after next Sunday? Does your love just run out of you and you don't love no more? I mean, from the day until next Sunday, you Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I just love you, girl. I love you, man. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh, I can't get enough of you and what have you. That's all right. But he gave you that command, come love ye one another. See, y'all think God forget, you think Christ forget his word. Christ don't forget his word. I like that. He gave you that commandment that you should love ye one another. And then he not only said that, he said you should do good to all men. And then he, he emphasized it, especially, especially to the household of faith. Do y'all think, God, that Jesus Christ don't know the word? This Jesus Christ is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Then the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Uh -huh. The word of God is Jesus Christ. Do y'all think Jesus is not looking? The scripture said he sat high and he looking low. And he just wants y'all, because see, the thing is, time is getting short. And God needs to get people saved. And he done sent you to be a vessel to help to get them saved. But you can't get them saved if you all tuck up in you. <sighs> let's see what Philip got to say. Let's, let, let's, let's see what then, Peter did then with Philip. Philip went down to the city of Samaria uh -huh. and preached Christ unto Who them. Who did he preach? Christ. He preached Christ unto that city. The, the city that nobody lacked. The, the disciple would go 50 miles out of the way not to go through Samaria. And Jesus told him one day, I must go through Samaria. I ain't ducking it no more. 
I must. You know, there'll come a time in your life that you got to stop back in situations and love on people. And see, the problem was Samaria. Samaria loved him. When Jesus wound up down there and the Samaritan woman says, hey, what are you doing down here? What are you doing at the well? You know the Samaritans and the Jews have no dealings. Why ask me to give you water? Jesus said, if you would ask me, I give you what kind of water? Living water. Living. Living water. See, that's why we're talking about life right now. Living water that you'll never thirst again. And then Jesus really busted her bubble. She said, give me that living water. Jesus said, well, tell me how your husband doing. <laughs> See, Jesus peeped her whole card. Because, see, he sat high and looked low. See, the only reason she came to the well in the middle of the day, because the other women came early morning and late night. But she knew if she came early morning, she's going to run into all them other wives. And you can't, for some reason, other women have problems with women. <sighs> let, let me get down off of this one minute so I can just see, uh, get down at your level. <sighs> She wouldn't, she wouldn't go to the well in the morning when all the other women were there. Uh-huh. And she wouldn't go in the after, late afternoon when the women went back. So she would go in the heat of the day. But you got to be careful. You're going to show up one time in the heat of the day, and you're going to meet Jesus. Sitting at your well. Mm. And it's a stranger. So he should know my business. I like y'all. Y'all got business. Y'all ain't got no business that Jesus don't know about. Lord have mercy. Jesus know all about your business. Your business. Uh -huh. And I like this because Jesus asked her one simple question. Where is thy husband? And she was there. You got to be careful with that lie now because I told you you got to know how to lie. You got to tell that the same way every time. You got to be able to tell it. And she says real, real, real nice. I had none. Uh-huh. Jesus called her in that line and said, now, you done had. Mm -hmm. Didn't say you have. You done had five that call themselves husbands. And the one, y'all you know, going to preach this, y'all going to let me preach this. See, see, y'all know the word. But I'm trying to get you to live it. See, it's, it's, it's all, you know, Amen. I got weapons. No, not not because, brother, that I knew it, what was right. I got whipped for what I didn't do, which was right. You, I remember my principal in high school one day asked the boys, says, uh, um, he, he, took, he took the bad boys and made them hall monitors. Now, now those are the ones he had the most problem with, so he put he made them the lawyers, made them the lawyer. Y'all be the hall monitor. Well, you know you're not supposed to be running up now. Yeah, I didn't think y'all knew that. See, see, it's not that what you know, it's what you do. The scripture says you're gonna be judged a lot for what you know and don't do, cause you know to do right. Amen. All right, read, read, read Philip for me now. Come on, I need to get past that. Verse five. Uh -huh. Then Philip went down to Samaria, yes. the city of Samaria, and uh -huh. preached Christ unto them. Go ahead. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the Bible reads, Now when the apostles, uh -huh. which were at Jerusalem, uh -huh. heard that Samaria had received the word of Ooh God. Wee. You know one thing about the word of God? The Gentile received it. Now here come the dogs, the other dogs. The, you know, the pure dogs received it first. That was the Gentile. Now here come the mixed dogs. Mm -hmm. You used to call the old mixed dog a sooner, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, sooner. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's, he ain't much of nothing. He's, he's all mixed up. Much. But see, one thing about God's word, it's for the sooner, it's for the full breed, much. it's for everybody. Amen. Come on, read. Look what it says. Now, when, now the, when apostles, the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, uh -huh. heard that Samaria uh -huh. had received the word of God. The word now is Jesus. The word is Jesus. Not the words of God, but the word of God is Jesus. Uh -huh. They sent unto them. They say, who did they send? Peter and John. Look at this here. You, you sent the heavy hitters into Samaria. Uh-huh. Sent the heavy. Because see, Jesus. Now, now, Peter them never did want to go to Samaria. That's why Jesus said, I must go. Jesus cleared the way because when he got there and told the woman about them five husbands and the one you got now ain't yours, she said, go, come meet a man that done told me all my business. Mm -hmm. Your business is out on Front Street. You, you don't love 
and you're loving the ones that God, let me move on from that. Read. 15 says. Who, uh -huh. when they were come down, uh -huh. pray for them. Look at Peter and John that they come down and they did what they prayed for them. Pray for them that uh -huh. they might that they receive might the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. See, a lot of people don't realize that you have, that you need the Holy Ghost. Come on. The Holy Ghost is a keeper. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Ghost will keep you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now he done got down here, and Peter and John, and they prayed for them that they be, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Come on, read. For as yet he was falling upon none of them. The Holy Ghost hadn't fallen. The Holy Ghost is a he now. Hadn't fallen among none of them. Upon uh, none of them. Only they were baptized. Only they were baptized. In the name of the Lord. In the Jesus. name of the Lord Jesus. They've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. But the Holy Ghost had. See, this thing is a package. Yeah. It's repentance. It's being baptized. And being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, it don't always come in that order. Repentance might come. And then here come uh, the Holy Ghost. And then come the baptism. You can't put Jesus in a box. That is going to work this way every time. Look at this here. It says now when they got down there, Peter prayed for them uh -huh, that the Holy Ghost, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now, look at this here. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Read. Then lay they their hands on them. Uh-huh. And they received the Holy Ghost. Peter and John laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. That's it there for right there. Amen. That's, that's Acts 8, 5, 14, 17. Now let's go. We done laid the foundation for life. That's the foundation for life. It's repentance, being baptized in Jesus, and being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's your foundation. But the scripture says this, going on from the principles of the doctrine. See, now we, we got saved. Now we got to learn to live this thing. Amen. Let's go over to 2 Peter, uh -huh, chapter 1. Verses 3 through 10. Uh huh. We're still dealing with Peter. Peter is still fulfilling the commandment that God gave him. Uh -huh. Feed my sheep, Peter. Mm. Feed my sheep. Let's, let's see what Peter got to say over here. I thank God you speaking Christmas morning because this ain't a Christmas morning message. I mean, this is getting us ready for Christmas morning Amen. so that we can have life after Christmas. Thank you. Thank Lord. you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Y'all make sure y'all come out next Sunday. We're we going we gonna to move quickly. We're not going to keep you here all day. You'll be able to get back home. By 10 o'clock, you'll be already open up the gifts because if the kids are like I was, you know, I, we, we was up by 6. Amen. Thank Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And the mom don't woke mom and dad up. They they just went to bed at three and four o'clock in the morning. Now the kids waking them up at six. Hey, mom, look look what Santa Claus left me. Amen. But it is Jesus' birthday. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to uh, what, Peter, first Peter, second Peter, chapter one, verses three through ten. And let's see what it's got to say here. Because now we're gonna deal with the other part of this message, godliness. Because once we come and get saved, uh -huh. Paul said, I died daily to the things of this world. I had to work on me. Paul right. said, after I preached to you, uh -huh. I got to bring myself under subjection in case I be a castaway. Mm -hmm. Amen. Paul is still being concerned that he might not make it in. Amen. Amen. After I preached to you, then I got to work on me. Do you yes, not Lord. know that you got to work on you? Yes, Lord. Do you not know that you got to work on you? I remember I spoke a message here one day that God made me lack. I am. I am. Now, see, you thought he made you like that old silly person that you are. But he didn't make you like you are. He made you lack. Because when, when Moses asked God, when I go down to Egypt, and they asked me who sent me, who should I say? And God said, tell them that. I am. I am that I am sent you. See, God made you like Jesus. Because the scripture said we were made in the image and the likeness of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And that's the I am. Not the nasty you that you is. Come on. For English sake, I apologize. Thank you, Jesus. We all had to change. We had somewhere along the way grab I remember one day when the young deacon asked me. He said, Deacon Briscoe, said, yes, sir, brother. He says, when did you know that you, that you couldn't answer him? I said, one day, brother, I just had to grab myself in my collar and shut up. 
Hmm? Yeah, I just shut up. I couldn't answer everybody. I wasn't going to be in everybody's business. I wasn't going to be a mm. part of everything. I just had to grab me and shut up. Come on, man. And sometimes you got to grab you. I got to no respect the person. Shut it down. He made you like I am, not like you is. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between I am and you is. I apologize. But thank you, Jesus. He wants you to be like I am. Amen. And not like you is. Come on. Amen. He wants you to have compassion. Yeah. He wants you to have love. Yeah, he wants you to have long suffering. He wants you to be able to put up with some things. Hallelujah. God said, I got time. I'm going to change situations. But I'm long winded. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see what first Peter, second Peter got to say three. And the Bible reads, mm -hmm. according as his divine power mm -hmm. has given unto us uh -huh. all things. Look at this. The divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life. Unto life. And godliness. In other words, everything you need is in this book. Everything you need is in these 66 books. Everything. He said, I've given you all things pertaining unto life, salvation. Uh -huh. And all things pertaining unto godliness is how to live. Thank you, Lord. I've put it in this book. Thank you, Jesus. Get familiar with the book, the word of God. He said, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and God. Read, brother. Godliness. Through through the knowledge through of the him. what? Through the knowledge of him. We got to forget. We got to get familiar with this word. Amen. Not only we got to get familiar, with, we got to live it. it. Thank you. I, I listen to y'all. Y'all know God's word. Oh, I can't get it out of my mouth before y'all done said it. So you know it. You're familiar with the word. Read, brother. Through, Say, through the, the knowledge, knowledge of him uh -huh. that has called us. To glory and virtue. You got to realize that God done call you through the knowledge and glory and virtue. Mm. Now, see, virtue is, 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 is a funny word. Come on. Virtue means right living. Virtue means conduct. Virtue means morality. Virtue means goodness. He said, I've called you, us, to the to glory, look at this here, to glory, to glory, mm. to glory. I've called you by glory and virtue, virtue. See, nobody can work on you like you. Thank you, Jesus. So let's see what he says here now, because we, we, we haven't got to, to the gist of it yet. Read. Verse four, whereby uh -huh. are given unto, excuse me, unto us exceeding great and precious promises. God done gave us great and precious promises with an S. Uh huh. That by these, that by these, ye might be partakers. Ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption. Look at this here. Having escaped the corruption. God wants us to escape the corruption. He don't want us to stay in it. Mm -hmm. He says in every way he'll make us make a way of escape. He says that having escaped the corruption, read. That is in wait, the wait, wait, world. That's where that's in the world. Through lust. Through lust. See, a lot of times y'all think lust tied to sex. But lust ain't always sex. I know y'all like it, and I won't stay on it too long. I'll, I'll, I'll get, you know, because some, some is in it, and some ain't, and some getting it, and some ain't. But, you know, we won't stay on lust. We'll just move on, because y'all y'all want me to stay on lust, but I'm not going to stay there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because everybody's at a different level in life. Amen. But he said, having escaped the corruption. Come on, y'all got to come back now. now. Come on now. He said, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Through lust. Uh-huh. Read five. Now, here we go. Y'all put your seatbelts on. Can I just get you to do one of these little things? Click up. Can, can, can I get you to just do a little? Click up for me. I, I didn't hear y'all. Y'all, y'all, you know, y'all, I can see why. Y'all, y'all disobedient. Y'all won't. Elder, I see why we have a hard time. I got you. You know, because, you know, Old Testament talked about that. Uh -huh. God said, I'm not going to send you to somebody that, 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 that will submit. He said, you are stiff. 
stiff-hearted and stubborn people. He said, I'm going to send you to stiff-hearted and stubborn people, which means that they won't listen. Stiff-necked. Mm -hmm. I just tried to get them clipped the belt. Most of them just sit in. Turn their pages. Mm -hmm. That's all right. My job is like Peter. Feed my sheep. Amen. Then he come back and told Timothy. He said, Timothy, in season and out of season. Pretty by their feet. Pretty at their feet. Now, fifth verse, click it up. Amen. Fifth verse in it reads. Now, fifth verse in my Bible has a subtitle that says, Growing in Grace. Growing in grace. Now, this is where God wants us to start doing. We done done the life thing. Now he wants to see you start growing in this thing. Amen. It's a growing process. We've been here 17 years. Some of you have been here longer than I, as long as we have. And God is still trying to get you to grow in grace. Oh, you've grown. You put on a few pounds. Oh, you've grown in a lot of things. Grace might not be one of them. Thank you, Jesus. Uh-huh. Let's see what it says. That's why I did a little click up. Growing in grace. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Read. Fifth verse and it reads. And besides this. And besides this. Giving all diligence. Giving all diligence. Mean giving all your heart to this thing. Do what? Add to your faith See, now virtue. one thing about it. God says, you cannot please me without faith. So I'm going to deal to every man the measure of faith. Now, God is such an awesome God. He says, if I know you can't please me, but those something, I'm going to give it to you. So I'm going to give you a measure of faith so you automatically can please me. Amen. Amen. So as it said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But now he just didn't leave it there. You know, you want a PBJ sandwich or peanut butter, and somebody just give you the two slices of bread and no jelly, no peanut butter. You can't say, I got a sandwich. So he says here, I'm going to give you faith so that you can please me, but with faith. Now look, read five again. And besides this. And besides this. Giving all diligence. Giving all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. Look at this here. Now, now, now you, you, you read that, but I'm going to help you out. He says, add to your faith. Add to your faith. Uh-huh. Add to your faith. I just don't want you to please me. I gave you what it took to please me, which was faith. But add to your faith, virtue, right living, morality, goodness, Uh conduct. Add to your faith, virtue. And this is just the beginning of, of your growth. And we got to look at, we got to search ourselves. Got to search ourselves. Add to your faith. Virtue. Uh Uh-huh. Add to your faith. Virtue. Virtue and to virtue. And to virtue. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge of the, you know how much knowledge our people have today? You can Google everything. If you don't know it, Google it. But he wants you to have the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants you to have the knowledge of this word. He wants you to have a knowledge that when Jesus is spitting on, being spit on, he didn't turn his face from the spit on. When they walked up and smacked him and, and what have you, and, and, and he turned one cheek to the other. Mm-hmm. See, you see, some of you can't take nothing. Come on. And when you can't take nothing, that, that storm is coming again. You know, that thing going to come more than once. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. He said, add to your faith virtue. Uh-huh. Then virtue, knowledge, the word of God. The word of God. We got to get in here. And, and, and Elder, we've been teaching for 17 years. And I, I like this. I like because the scripture really burst some of us open. The scripture said that we were all taught the same word. Same word. But some didn't mix it with faith. With faith. You all were taught the same thing, but some didn't mix it with faith Come to on. grow. Come on. The same word. I like this. I like this. Look what he said. He said, add to your faith virtue, and now virtue, knowledge. Read. And to knowledge. And to knowledge. Temperance. Woo! <laughs> Self-control. Come on. Say that again. Self-control. <laughs> Can I say it again? Self-control. 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 Self-control, 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 
Self glory. If you got it yet, because I'll keep on. See, ain't no use. Ain't no use moving forward if we ain't got if we ain't got that down pat yet, if we ain't got virtue down, we ain't got knowledge down, we ain't got temperance down, we, we still stuck. Wow. That's the truth. Did y'all say, say it again? Say it again. Say it again. More over, brother. Let it sink in. Let it sink in, sir. Live life. Live it. Come on. Preach, sir. Add to your faith uh -huh. virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance. Temperance. Uh huh. Self control. All right. And to temperance. You mean I got to add something now to. <sighs> mm. <laughs> Boy. And to temperance. And to temperance. Patience. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. See, I know they know it's written. I'm trying to get you to a point to live it. Amen. I know you know it. Amen. I know you know it. I know you know it. Come on. But the thing is, the know. subtitle says what? Growing. I had help earlier. I lost my help. I done lost my help, my brother Ron. I had help earlier. Things that pertain. I had help earlier. He says, growing in. <sighs> my help with the left, baby. Thank God you still there. Amen. Help us, Lord. He said, add to your faith virtue, uh -huh. knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, self-control, and to temperance, patience. patience. Read. And to patience. And to patience. Godliness. <sighs> Things that pertains to life unto life and godliness. Salvation with life. Now we got to work on things pertaining unto godliness. Virtue, right living. Your conduct. Morality. Goodness. Uh -huh. Is all tied up in virtue. Knowledge in the word of God. Temperance, self-control, not getting, not getting mad after everything. I mean, some of you get mad before it drops, before it even hits the floor. I mean, and you know, it's, it's not wrong to, to be angry because the scripture, Christ talked about that. Oh. Christ actually said, get angry. <sighs> but you hold on to it forever. Forever, forever, oh. forever is a, long, a time. long time. Forever. Come on. Now, see, I used to sing that song to you. God, let me break my song down, y'all. <laughs> Go ahead, be. Thank you. But see, he's dealing with love there because that, that song was given to that brother by his wife showing, showing how God loves us. Forever is a long time. That's how long I love you. That was Christ. That was God talking about us. That's how long he loved us. Forever is a long time. And that's how long I love you. Thank you, Jesus. But here, look what he says. He says to temperance. And the temperance, patience. And the patience, godliness. Read seven. And to godliness. And to godliness. Brotherly kindness. <sighs> brotherly kindness. Kindness. What a word. Brotherly kindness. Kindness. Treating one another with a smile and not a fake smile. Thank you, Jesus. Loving on one another. 
not just during the holiday season, not just do Valentine, wanting something, 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 something. Like, something. What you get me, baby? Something. Mm -hmm. I'm happy when you, I'm going to kiss you when you give me something. I go in the store all the time. I've asked the storekeepers many times, uh, what shelf could I find something on? They said, go down all five at the bottom. Over on the left-hand side, you'll find something. I'm still looking. I ain't found it yet. But he says, to godliness, brotherly kindness. Uh-huh. All this is about leading towards godliness. Because God said, I want you to be my example in the earth. It's hard for you to be my example if you are Peter cutting off ears. Come on. It's hard to be my example if you're cussing at everything. It's hard to be my example if you're not Christ-like. It's hard to be my example if you have no compassion when the scripture said that Jesus is full of compassion. Help us, Lord. It's hard to be, my, be an example of me if you don't have no long suffering. Mm. Suffering. Long suffering. Putting up with. Wait until God turn it around. You got so now you want to get your baseball bat and turn it around. Oh, you want to turn it around. You want to turn it around. You taught. And Habakkuk came along and said, Lord, how long? How long should I put up with this? I know all of us have been there. Lord, how long? How much longer should I deal with this? How much longer? That's flesh talking. Because flesh gets tired of putting up with things. Putting up with. Putting up with. Putting up with. But if you don't gave it to Jesus, Jesus got it. Jesus, and you can't do it. Your baseball bat ain't as good as Jesus. Because Jesus can take you through something. That that you you put your baseball bat on this on the on the on the back shelf and said, God, I didn't know you were gonna do it like that. He said his ways are so high above the heavens. As his ways are so high as the heavens is above the earth. Seventh verse read for me. And to godliness, mm -hmm. brotherly kindness. Uh-huh. And to brotherly kindness, uh -huh. charity. Woo wee. After patience, temperance, knowledge. Brotherly kindness. You mean that didn't include love? Mm. <laughs> you mean I, I, I got to give brotherly kindness whether I love you or not? You mean temperance had nothing to do with love? You know patience had nothing to do with love? Morality and goodness and good conduct, right living had nothing to do with love? And above all these things, the scripture says, what? Put on charity. Put on love. Put it on. Love is not fake. Love is not fake. Love. And we come into a season for 2023 that we need to check ourselves and say, Lord, we're going to grow to the next level. Lord, I've been, at, I've been in this church now 17. I've been in this church 5, 10, 15 years. I've been in here since yesterday. And God, I'm going to work on putting on love. I'm going to work this year putting on love. And, Lord, I'm not going to work on it where nobody can see it. Love is an action word. Yes, it is. People should be able to see it. Now, you don't get there overnight. Paul said, I died daily to the things of this world. It, it takes a while to grow into this thing. But we got to be patient with one another. We got to love on one another. Even when they don't act right, I got to love you anyway. It's a command. Now, I mean, I, I've been the pastor here for 17 years. I've seen a little bit of everything. I've indulged a little bit and a whole lot of everything. I'm still here. Hallelujah. I'm still here. I didn't turn my resignation in and leave you to your own because you didn't send me. You didn't put me here. God put me here. And if I leave and go as Elijah and lock myself in a cave, God will meet me in a cave and ask that real stupid question. What you doing here? One kind of question you ain't got an answer to. 
you know Jezebel done sent me a text message and she done said by tomorrow at this time you be a dead man and you've been there now a month so you're not dead you need to get up out of this cave so I couldn't leave and go to Florida and get my tan on in January thank you Jesus leave the sheep behind but you know that's another 900 miles and every one of them miles, God could take me out, leaving his sheep behind. See, I got the answer to him, not to you. Because you didn't pick me. You didn't choose me. You didn't put me here. You didn't send me. But after he sent me, he said, now, Peter, preach the word. Feed my people in season and out. Where we at? Where we at? Verse 8. Let's go back. Okay, let, let's do 7 and come into 8. Verse 7. Uh-huh. And to godliness. And to godliness. Brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness. Charity. Love. Love on top of that stuff. Mm. Y'all got baked cakes, and y'all like chocolate cakes and vanillas and all this icing, but y'all need to wrap your cake in love. Amen. Yeah, y'all need to smooth. Y'all need to spread some love over this stuff. Yeah, y'all y'all need to spread some love. See, I, I'm a few cake person. Just as few as it want to be, I love it. And it's heavy. It's heavy. See there? See, I, I got, you get them, you, you, did you get that, did you get that, thing, uh, minister? Did you get that? Some people, some people don't love you, cake. But I didn't speak for them, did I? Uh, I used, I used a one letter word there. I said, and because they didn't like it, they, they, they spread something on it that messed my cake up. <sighs> We went over to, the, over to the market the other day, and honey bought me one. That little thing was about this big and weighed 10 pounds. <laughs> it lets you know when you eat it, it drops to the bottom of your stomach, you know it's there. It wasn't an angel food. It wasn't light. She was, she was full of nuts and berries and fruits and everything, and I loved it. Thank you, Jesus. See, see, they keep talking about me. That's all right. That's all right God, let's see. Wait a minute. There's, there's two angels. There's two angels. There's Gabriel. And what's the other one? Michael. See, Gabriel going to write you a note one day. That's it. And see, and if you don't take the text and chill out, let Gabriel show up. Yeah. Gabriel, let Michael show up. Thank you. Let Michael show up. Michael can roll up there and you know somebody gonna get cut. Oh. You know when Michael shows he gonna bring, he gonna come to fight. Come on, Mike. See, that's how the devil got cast out of heaven. Jesus, God didn't cast him out. No. He told Michael to go down there and get that demon and cast him out. Michael cast him out. Yes, he did. Come on, let's see. Come on, take me back. Take me to eight gotcha. now. Uh, for if these things be in you. Look at this. Look at this here now. He says, brotherly kindness, charity, patience, long-suffering, temperance, knowledge, virtue. If, for if these things, mm, God knows. That's a powerful little word. Yeah, right there. And we can't cut it out. No. Let me take my pen and scratch it. Ain't gonna work. See, because if made it optional, that it might not be there. For if these things, mm -hmm. these things, brotherly kindness, charity, mm. patience, self-control, knowledge, right living, virtue, conduct, goodness, mm. morality. For if these things, mm -hmm. for if these things, go ahead. Be in you. Be in who? You. See, I didn't say I did. This is God talking because it's already in Jesus. Jesus is saying now, it's already a part of me, but if it be in you, in read. A, in a bound. See, it's not just got to be there because they know the word, uh -huh. but they got to be able to do the word. If these things be in you and abound, mm -mm -mm. it's got to show. If it's in you and you don't use it, what good is it? You get, you get twice whipped when you know to do right and do wrong. Huh? 
Look what it says. For if these things be uh -huh. in you and abound, read. They make you. They make you. That you. You. They make you, uh huh. They make you that ye shall neither be barren, uh huh, nor unfruitful. He said, if, if these things be in you, it makes you neither to be barren nor unfruitful. Read. In the knowledge of our Lord. In the knowledge Jesus of our Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. See, Jesus Christ, they call, they call them Christians at Antioch because they was what? See, y'all know the word. I don't know why I've got to come in here after 17 years and teach y'all these things. You know this. You know this. So what's hindering you from being Christ-like? Something is hindering you. from, And I know what's hindering you. You hindering you from being Christ-like. Because you want to keep you on the throne. Mm. And you and Christ can't be on the throne. You in Christ can't be on the throne. Only one can be on the throne at a time. Paul was on the throne, and God knocked him off. Peter was on the throne. God knocked him off. Elijah was on the throne. God knocked him off. Isaiah was on the throne. God knocked him off. Isaiah said in the year. That King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord. The Lord was already there. But he couldn't see the Lord because of somebody else in his life. And he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, now I saw the Lord. Don't let some, if the only person in your life that should die should be you. That's what he's talking about here. He said, for if these things be in you, whew, I need to highlight this. I'm going to circle in my Bible. You can do what you want in yours. I'm going to highlight, ask, written, everything. Because, see, this, this is not just pertaining to you. This, I got to live this same thing in me. See, he said, for if these things be in you and abound, read. He said that ye shall neither be barren uh -huh. nor unfruitful uh -huh. in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. But he that lacketh these things, -wee. if they if they are barren, and if they're not barren, and if they are bound in you, you gonna come forward. But if he that lacketh these things, these things, if you lack his brotherly kindness, if you lack this charity, uh -huh. if you lack Listen, patience, temperance, godly knowledge. If you lack these things, but he that lacketh these things, read. He that lacketh these things is blind. Is blind. And cannot see afar off. And cannot see afar off. And I, has forgotten. Mm, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says he can't see afar off. Uh -huh. He's blind. And now he says that he has forgotten. <laughs> Come on, let's, what has he forgotten? He has forgotten uh -huh. that he was purged uh -huh. from his old sin. You have forgot one day that God allowed you to live after smoking all them drugs, cussing all them people out, Good word. drinking all that liquor, Driving down the road, blowing your car to 115 miles an hour. Good word. He done allowed you to get through all these things. My God. Have you forgot what God has done for you? Ooh, have you forgot when it comes to somebody else? He said, for he that lacketh these things is blind. Mm. First of all, you blind. Second of all, cannot see afar off. Mm. Third of all, he has forgotten that he was Purge from his, his. Can I get you to say his? Yes. His. Yes. Not mine. Yes. Yours. Old sins. Uh-huh. Mm. Close me out here with 10. Verse 10. Uh-huh. Wherefore, uh -huh. the rather, uh -huh. brethren, brethren, give diligence. Give diligence. To make your calling. Stop there. Make who? Your calling. 
Check yourself. Check yourself. Don't get upset with others so easily. Don't cuss, fuss, or fight each other so easily. We got to work on love in this place. This place was built on love. Came in the door, it was loved on. Love. Nobody that left here never can leave here and say they weren't loved. Or oh, it might have been something else said. Might have been something else done. But it was said in love and done in love. <laughs> Read, brother. Look what it says. Ten again. Wherefore. Wherefore. The rather. The rather. Brother. Brethren. With who? Brethren. No, the world. Brethren. Not the church. The church. No. No, not the church. Brethren. No, no, this ain't in the church. Ain't Brethren. In the church. No, no. Are you going to make me believe it's in the church? Brethren. You know why I say it's not in the church? Because the church is a representation of Jesus Christ. Now, if it's in this building, you bring it here. But it ain't in the church because the church is perfect. Jesus Christ is perfect. And that's, it's not in him. But if, if, it's, if it's in you, you brung it. it. And you got to work on you to get rid of it. Because when God called us to heaven, all this stuff, all this stuff, love. Now, I, I love that for he said, if these things be in you, and abound. Uh -huh. See, it, it, it's, it's in you, all of you, most of you, some of you. It's in you, but you got to let it take abound. You got to let it come forward. But before you let it come forward, that anger comes out of there. The hatefulness rise up quick. You know how they talk about how a lie gets there before the truth even gets started. That's the stuff. We got to work on us. And we got to work on us this year. We get ready to go into 2000. God has blessed us to live to get, to, yes, to get one more Hallelujah. Sunday, brother. Hallelujah. Well, look, by the time you get up here Sunday morning, this is going to be a new church. Ain't going to be the same. Hallelujah. Ain't going to be the same. Ain't going to be the same. Because they're going to come in here with, with, with a different heart. Ain't going to be a fake. Ain't going to be a one Sunday fake. Christmas morning loving on everybody. Oh, I just love you. You ain't spoke to them all year. All of a sudden, oh, I just love you. What up to the other 50, 51 Sundays? Come on, man. That's all right. We'll throw them in the seal of forgiveness. We'll start afresh. Come in here and love on one another and be true. And, and, and feel real about it. God is Thank watching. you, Jesus. I love you, sister. I love you, brother. I love you, and God's going to work on me this year to be a better person, and Amen. I'm going to show you. Because he said, if it be in you in a bound. See, love is an action word. You got to show this thing. Yes. And love causes you. Love causes you to put you on the back burner. Yeah. Love causes. Thank you, Jesus. It costs you to, to take things and, and, and just say, oh, I kick it. I like water. One of our ducks back. Read 10. Close me up. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, uh -huh. give diligence. Uh-huh. To make your calling. Whew. Make your calling. And election. And election. Sure. The election wasn't fake. Nah, didn't nobody steal the election. You the elect of Christ. If you've been saved, born again, you've been elected by Christ. Mm. Now, it took Peter three and a half years. And he's still cussing and fussing. He's still doing things. And I understand y'all wasn't walking with Jesus 365 a day like Peter was. So it didn't took you longer to get there. But don't worry about it. We're here now. And, and, and Christ will come back and call us by name. He says, to make your calling the election sure. Read. Four. I, mm -hmm. lost, I lost my verse. Again. Ten again. Read ten. Ten. Got you. Uh -huh. To make your calling an election sure. Uh-huh. For if ye do these things. God knows. If ye do these things. Mm -hmm. If ye, you do these things. God done gave us so much time to work on us. And he's such a merciful God. If you live to get to 2022, what's the date of the day? The 18th. He's been merciful to us. When I look at the fact that we lost... I look at the fact that we lost Mother this year, uh, Mother Gray. 
We look at the fact we, we lost Sister Ida this year. We look at the fact that we lost Sister Mo. These are three women that love God. They truly love God. Why would God come down here and pluck them out? These women love God and demonstrated it. Demonstrate. They love God. Sister Ida loved God. Oh, Amen. she loved to come into church and praise God. Oh, we had a heck of a praise time at her at her going home. Amen. God knows the funeral people still talking about it, Brother George. When they see me, they still talk about that, talk about that going home service. That we had a we had a home going time. Mother Gray loved God. Yeah, prayed yeah. all the time. Sister Mo, you couldn't get out of her sight. She, she, she gonna love some God on you. She gonna love some Jesus on you. He said, if this be in you and abound, mm. thank you. They make, they make you that shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off My and God. has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Mm. Read 10 again. Wherefore? Wherefore? The rather. The rather. Brethren. Brethren. Give diligence. Give diligence. To make your calling. Make your calling. And election and sure. And election sure. For if ye do these things. For if ye do these things. You should never fail. Fall. You should never fall. You should never fall. You should never fall. You should never fall. Thank you, Jesus. Things that pertain unto life and godliness. Things that pertain attributes to life, unto life and godliness. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all stand. I ain't keeping you no longer. That's the word of God. Take it, mill on it, think on it, roll around with it. Because this year, First Lady, this year, we're moving higher in love. In love. No fake. We're going to work on ourselves. We're going to move higher in love. No fake. We're going we're gonna to start treating one another differently. Brotherly, what it says, brethren, wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling in election sure. For if ye, if ye do these things, you shall never fall, never fall. We love you. Can you turn to somebody and say, I love you? Uh, turn, turn to somebody you don't normally tell it to. Yeah, turn it to somebody you don't always tell it to and tell them I love you. And mean it. And mean it. Mean it. Turn to somebody sometime and just say, I'm sorry. Just, just turn to somebody and just point to, just turn to somebody and say, I'm sorry. They, they, they might not even know why you're saying you're sorry. But just tell them anyway. Because you gotta you, you gotta get you gotta you look at here. Look at listen to me now. You gotta get used in your spirit saying, I'm sorry. If you say it out of your mouth more than once and twice, you'll get used to it after a while. You know how many people can't forgive? If you just turn to somebody and say, I forgive you. Because your nature has not been a forgiving nature. He said, if these things be in you in a bound, sometimes you just got to be able to tell yourself, I forgive you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. And love on people. Thank you, Jesus. As Bishop Green would say, I know ain't nobody coming to the altar after that type of message. But I'm going to give you an opportunity anyway. Anybody want to come for prayer? Sickness, healing, deliverance, salvation. Come on up here. If you want